Hi guys, welcome to today's session. Thank you all for your responses on yesterday. And our yesterday's quiz question was National Productivity Council works under which ministry? Our answer is uh, it is Ministry of Commerce and Industries. NPC works under Ministry of Commerce and Industries. That is the right answer. Let's now start today's session. First question for the day, which among the following is are excluded from the essential commodities list under recent amendment to essential commodities act? 1 cereals, 2 tea, 3 oil seeds, 4 edible oils, 5 onion and 6 potatoes. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Option A 1, 3 and 6 only. Option B 2, 4, 5 and 6 only. Option C 1, 2, 3 and 4 only and option D 1, 3, 4, 5 and 6 only. Guys, the correct answer here is it is option D 1, 3, 4, 5 and uh, 6 only. Guys, the Essential Commodities Act was legislated at a time when country was facing scarcity of foodstuffs due to persistent low levels of food grain production. The country was dependent on imports and assistance to feed the population that time, such as wheat import from US under PL 418. So in this scenario, to stop hoarding and black marketing of foodstuffs, the Essential Commodities Act was enacted in 1955. But now, if you see the situation has changed, India has become surplus in most agri-commodities. But farmers have been unable to get better prices due to lack of investment in cold storage processing and export. So the imposition of curbs on stocking of farm produce and regulation of the prices of commodities etc under Essential Commodities Act are some of the factors responsible for less entrepreneurial spirit and thus less investment in the farm sector. So the recent amendment to Essential Commodities Act would deregulate the commodities such as cereals, edible oils, oil seeds, pulses, onion and potatoes. It will help to lessen the fears of private investors of excessive regulatory interference in their business operations. So any limits under Essential Commodities Act over these commodities will be imposed only in exceptional circumstances such as war, famine, extraordinary price rise and uh, natural calamity. And the freedom to produce, hold, move, distribute and supply will lead to harnessing economies of scale and attract private sector foreign direct investment into agriculture sector. What is that uh, government is hoping? And it will help drive up investment in coal storages and modernization of food supply chain and all. So that's why government recently amended Essential Commodities Act, Act and uh, deregulated the commodities such as cereals, edible oils, oil seeds, pulses, onions and potatoes. So that is it. Moving to the second question. Second question is Ameri Ice Shelf AIS, the largest glacier drainage basins in the world is located in which among the following region? Option A Antarctica, Option B Alaska, Option C Arctic and Option D Eastern Russia. Guys, the correct answer here is it is uh, located in Antarctica, option A. So this Emery Ice Shelf is one of the largest glacier drainage basins in the world located on the east coast of Antarctica. You can see the map of important ice shelves in Antarctica here. The green colored one is Emery Ice Shelf. And the AIS dynamics and mass balance help in understand the changes in the global climate scenario. And recently, the National Center for Polar and Ocean Research, NCPOR, has predicted an increase in expansion of Ameri Ice Shelf boundaries from its 2016 positions, which is a major development and a major observation also. And guys, it's time for our quiz question. And today's quiz question is, we talked about the National Center for Polar and Ocean Research. So the question is, the National Center for Polar and Ocean Research works under which ministry? So please post your answers in the comment section. We will now move to last question for the day. 
Last question is with reference to Pharmacopoeia Commission for Indian Medicine and Homeopathy. Consider the following statement. Statement 1. It is an autonomous body that works under Ministry of Health. Statement 2. It serves as an umbrella organization for Ayurvedic Pharmacopoeia Committee, Siddha Pharmacopoeia Committee, Unani Pharmacopoeia Committee and Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Committee. So which of the above statements is are correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2 and Option D neither 1 not 2. Yes, it works under Ministry of Ayush. So first statement is wrong. Our answer is option B, two only. Pharmacopoeia Commission for Indian Medicine and Homeopathy received uh, approval to be re-established. It has a subordinate office under the Ministry of Ayush recently. It was in news. And presently, PCIM and H is an autonomous body under Ayush Ministry since 2010. And uh, Pharmacopoeia Laboratory for Indian Medicine, that is PLIM, and the Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Laboratory, HPL, shall be merged under this commission, that is Pharmacopoeia Commission for Indian Medicine and Homeopathy. And the merger is aimed at optimizing the use of resources for enhancing the standardization outcomes of Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani, and Homeopathy drugs. And legal status shall be accorded to the merged structure by making amendments to drugs and cosmetics rules 1945. So that is it. That's all for today guys. We'll meet tomorrow with another set of questions. Please post answer to the quiz question and your scores in the comment section. Thank you for watching.